example one, page 54, white packet. We're going to start using the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. Uh, this can be used to find the solution to a problem like you see here. The quadratic formula can also be used to find the x-intercepts of a parabola. It's especially helpful when the problem itself is not factorable. For example, easy or difficult to try to factor this. Does everybody see the problem on your paper? Try factoring it. You're going to try to do like a 2x and an x and a plus plus here and a plus plus there. So now we're trying to work with 3 and 1. Guys, you, you agree that 3 and 1 aren't going to work out nicely if I put them here. That's not going to make 6x in the middle, right? And 3 and 1 aren't going to work here. That would make 5x in the middle. So clearly this problem is not factorable. So I think we're going to get some answers that are, that are going to be irrational. All right? So this sounds like a job for... It starts, the, quad, the quadratic formula, it starts with the line of symmetry. So the quadratic formula, go ahead and write this on your paper, begins with the line of symmetry, negative b over 2a. And then after that, you're going to see a plus or minus the square root of something over 2a. So the denominator is the same on both sides of it. All right, it's 2a. And the plus or minus is because what we're looking for are two solutions or two x-intercepts. And if you imagine them to be like on a parabola with the line of symmetry here, the two x-intercepts are equidistant from that line. Does that make sense? Yes or no? If I had a parabola with a line of symmetry and an x-axis, would the two x-intercepts be the same distance to the right and to the left? All right. So that's why this formula, to me, makes sense. It's got your line of symmetry plus or minus some value. Well, what is that missing value up here? It's the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's a very important part of the quadratic formula that has a name. That blue part is called the discriminant. The discriminant. Go ahead and write that word down. The blue part is called the discriminant. And the reason it's important is it tells us how many solutions we should expect to have. All right? By just calculating the blue part, b squared minus 4ac, I like to calculate that first. By doing that, if I check b squared minus 4ac, there are three outcomes that it could possibly have. It could be equal to zero, greater than zero, what's the third option, or less than zero. This will tell me how many solutions to expect. If it's green, which is positive, greater than zero, I will expect to have two real solutions. Notice the use of the word real. All right? Therefore, we will have two real solutions. If it's negative, Imagine you're going through a problem, and b squared minus 4ac is negative, and you're about to do what to it? Square root it. What happens when you square root a negative number? Not irrational. You get an imaginary. So in the red case, when it's negative, you can expect two imaginary solutions. All right? They're going to have i. If it's equal to zero, that's the best case scenario. You're only going to have one real solution. So a lesson on the discriminant. Hopefully you understand that. Why 
why if it's zero, why if it's zero, would we end up with only one solution? Again, imagine you're doing a problem, and you do b squared minus 4ac, and that comes out to be what? Zero. What's the square root of zero? What's zero divided by 2a? Zero. What's the line of symmetry, whatever you get here, plus zero? Whatever the green thing is, right? What's the green thing minus zero? the green thing. So you'll get the same answer twice. And that is our one real solution.